Hey BBWs, we're so excited to announce our first sponsor, Burn the Patriarchy Candles. Burn the Patriarchy's candles are handmade soy candles with a feminist agenda. They are made in small batches so they will sell out. The new fall line just dropped featuring three delightfully spooky scents. You can buy these sweet little babies at www.burnthepatriarchycandleco.com. At checkout, enter the promo code BLOCKBUSTER to receive 10% off. Again, that's www.burnthepatriarchycandleco.com, promo code BLOCKBUSTER. Thank you. Bye. Come with us where the corn is popped and the throwback Thursdays never stop. It's a magical land not far away. All you have to do is just press play. So hop on the couch and close your eyes. Gonna party like it's 99. Join us, watch the movies of our lives with Blockbuster Wives. Welcome to Blockbuster Wives, where your two favorite 90s babies talk about movies from the era of a certain blue and yellow video rental store. I'm your host with the most late fees, Shay Baby. And this is Stacy, not always kind, but always rewinds. And you're listening to Blockbuster, Blockbuster Wives. Wives. Yeah, baby. We hope you've been having such a great spooky season. We've loved doing the Halloween movies. They're some of our faves. And today we're extra, extra excited because we have an amazing filmmaker, screenwriter, all around creator, and one of the best party planners I've ever met, Brandon Mao. Brandon Mao, bam, bam, bam. And we're here Hello. to talk about Scream, and I knew I had to get Brandon for the Scream episode. I mean, I always knew he was into Scream. And I think the first thing that I saw that you were into Scream was your remake of Scream, which is incredible. And then he hosted a Scream-themed party where everyone had to come as a Scream character, and it was the best. And people, when I tell you the level of detail Brandon put into well, Specifically party, you guys, though, because you every year there's everyone anticipates, like, you guys are like, it's like, a, if my parties are like the gala, you guys are like the... I don't know who the Rihanna and oh whoever my she's God. with at the time because I feel like we're always like what are they gonna do and every time it's just like I knew the second I opened the door I was like you're you're the lead singer of Creed and you're Cotton's girlfriend like it was perfect <laughs> I knew exactly yeah, what we you... wanted we wanted to bring Creed into it just it was perfect what a fun element Mm-hmm. So and but you would go into the bathroom and there'd be like newspaper articles about the movie and then they had a full on dummy. Um, that was fun. My boyfriend, he's big and he plays football and he's going to kick your ass. I that got like so sausage good. from like that was still in the casing that I like kind of slit open and put it on like the fake dummy's stomach and then like poured the blood on it and then like forgot. We kind of, you know, after you get to a party, you're like, I'll get to it, you know, whatever. But it was outside and then like we go to clean it and there were so many maggots. <gasps> oh, so it was like a hella realistic. It, oh God, it was disgusting, but it was kind of rad. Okay. Sense. Um, I have to invite myself to your next whatever party. Absolutely. Because we love a good theme. I don't know if you've ever seen any of me or Stacy's uh, Halloween costumes, but we I always have. Go and it's, it's funny enough because I'm sh- we Nate and I were um, uh, Ice and Ernie last oh year or God, the year before you were? that. Yeah. Oh, so cool. it was so funny. Yeah, I'm here for it. But yeah, no, obviously, and especially for Mean Girls, especially for Mean Girls, you are more than welcome that because the 20th anniversary is on in 2024. Oh so my God! So I have over well. a year to prep. Yes. Okay, no I excuses. think I can. Huh? No excuses. No, no excuses. A year, a year and a half from now, I'm gonna be ready, baby. All right, but Very we are specifically excited because Brandon is like a scream expert and like passion connoisseur for this movie, and obviously we only get the best of the best to be on the. The cast. I don't know why I keep wanting to call it a cast. Am I cool yeah. now? I, Am I cool now? If I had pearls, I'd be clutching them. I <laughs> like the cast. Ooh. Um, but no, we're uh, we're super stoked to have you. So thank you I'm so much for joining us. Thank you so much. All right. We have some questions that we want to ask y'all. Yeah. I don't have the questions up, so I'm going to hand you. it over. Oh, okay. So number one, we want to talk about the Scream remake because I actually haven't been privileged enough to see this yet. So we... I filmed it back in like 2011. We didn't film the entire thing, unfortunately. It was filmed in like bits, but there was one. I filmed the opening with my friend Paige Billiot, who is do she was she played Casey Becker, who is moved to LA and is like was on like there a couple of years ago. I was watching the MTV something. There was a Billboard Music Awards and Lord was performing and like over there was a couch and she's sitting on the couch and talking and 
there's Paige sitting next to her, you know, just like laughing up there with Lord. I'm like, she's in LA doing her thing. Wow. She's one of the best people. Like anytime I made a movie, I would want Paige in it, but she is very successful now. I'm very happy for her. Um, but yeah, we filmed the finale, I guess, from like 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. at my aunt's old house. It is wild how long filming things take. Like you think so like, much. oh, we'll just film these quick scenes and then we'll be done. And then you're like hours later. Well, at the time, too, I didn't I, I was I was I was like 21, 22, but I wasn't even had having gone to a performing arts high school and being like trained in like theater. I still didn't have I don't know why, but I didn't think to have them like come memorized. So I just do it shot by shot. Like, okay, here's your line. Yeah, like you say this, you yeah. say that. Well, I think I actually did have them memorize some of it. And then like what I would like to do is just stand in different shot parts of the room and then just film it from all different angles, which is, I think, essentially what they do anyway. But, but yeah, yeah, it was fun. We, we filmed at nine. I want to say we, like by the time we got to like the infamous kitchen scene, it was like 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. And my friend, our friend Cece, her stepdad was there because he was playing Sydney's dad. And so this uh, poor amazing. guy in his 40s late probably early 50s was tied up bound and gagged on the floor while we were like filming and re <laughs> reshooting and very realistic though. it was great yeah very realistic and i really wanted to get a clip of it from you but you and I, we all share a very tragic history of making a horror movie that's become lost to the ages so tell us what yeah. happened to yours i had it was a computer that my dad had gotten me i don't know my sophomore year of high school and by this time i like i said i was like 21 22 and it was it ran so slow and by the time i like made a trailer and made because i could never wait i was like if i have the scene filmed i want to edit the scene so i edited 14 minutes like the entirety of from essentially when sydney isn't is isn't sure whether it's to trust randy and Stu up until the end up until the finale um it's really funny because i think i still have the footage on that part at least on my on my current computer but Right after I went to upload and everything, it, it just crashed. Just every, oh, my com whole computer crashed. So I didn't back up anything. I lost all the footage. Um, there's a couple clips that exist on YouTube. Like there's from Paige's um, amazing Casey Becker. Because what I love about her was that she never wanted to. She had seen it, obviously. But she's like, I'm not going to em em emulate. Emulate? Is that the right word? Yeah. Drew in any way because she wanted to do her own thing. And she absolutely did. And same with the people that we filmed the finale with but it was it's really funny when i rewatch it near the ending when you know everything's coming to an end like you see the sun rising in the background oh so that's so cool yeah, it's pretty cool and i remember i had friends like sleeping on the roof at one point because they it wasn't just the people who were filming it was you know cc's mom was there because she her dad was there as well so she was just right know, packed house yeah absolutely well our lost horror movie was nowhere near as intricate it was <laughs> it was a very start film stop film slapdash uh, movie we made about a killer sex worker and we called it the horror movie. <laughs> it was creatively enough. Yeah. Well, you have to be like, you have to be specific because I feel like hor hor horror, 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 otherwise. Yeah, it was literally yeah. W-H-O-R-E dash E-R movie. <laughs> we only made one copy on, it, okay, so we recorded on an old school camcorder. It got recorded over because it was a shared like family Absolutely. camcorder. Mm -hmm. My family bad. Camcorder. And on the family, <laughs> the my dad's like, "What the fuck is this?" He like <laughs> records over with like UFC or some shit. And then we only made one VHS of it. So we made a copy, and I gave it to my best friend Jeremy for some reason. I don't know why I gave it You're to like, him. You need to watch this. Yeah, I'm like, we're gonna be famous. You need to see this. His family is like wildly religious. <laughs> Why did I? Why I chose to give it to him of all fucking people? Like I have a lot of degenerate homies, like that would have kept it forever. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> he still has access to like all of his family's DVD or DVDs and VHSs, and I'm like, every year at some point, I like beg him on my knees for this fucking VHS that I'm never. You know what? I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not gonna put that in the universe. I will get it back if I have to knock on the door and like talk to his rents myself. I will fucking get it. It's but like, it. it was a piece of cinematic history and magic that like we truly need back for real, for real. I bet it's unwatchable though. Like I bet it's so bad you probably can't hear anything because we didn't have mics. Hardcore disagree, but we can. Uh, we I still love you very much. Agree to disagree. <laughs> You say cinematic masterpiece. I say unwatchable garbage. <laughs> we'll never know. That's kind of the magic. We will know <laughs> when I get it back from Jeremy's parents. I'm talking to you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, R.I.P. to film projects. 
It's a different world now with clouds. It's even worse because I have some privated videos on my YouTube, my old YouTube account, but um, which is associated with my email, my current email. However, do you guys remember when you used to have a like a username for mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. Don't know what that was or my password. So like, there's an absolutely absolutely nothing I can do. That's I like tried contacting support. Uh, mm -hmm. I made like a horror movie about with my friend Michelle's dog, like her golden retriever oh. that I'm never gonna f watch again because it's all my private videos. We had a similar experience back. with the photo bucket, but then Shay like a, um, have a you head been to photo bucket incident. recently? Yeah, they charge you and shit. Oh, who do they think they are? I know. Who do they think they are? I, all my pictures are blurry. I'm like, I know exactly what that what picture that is. I just want to see myself as, as a Gerard kid. Way, okay, homecoming with the <laughs> armband around my thing. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, photo bucket. They've got. I mean, I guess they have to find some way to make. Them. Yeah, I have a lot of questions. First of all, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, which reminds me, our next question for you is: When did you first watch Scream? Did you see it in theaters? I wish I so up so now because of like re-releases, I have officially seen every single one in theaters, with the exception of two, which is very heartbreaking because it just happened um, this past October for the twenty fifth twenty fifth anniversary. But my I get asked that a lot, I feel like, as a as a Scream fan, and I, it's always very hazy, but I do remember being at home. Um, I was seven when it came out, and I re remember watching it when I was, like, nine, so only two years later, but it was the opening scene. That I can close. I don't remember. I think I can remember where I was, um, but it was, like, in my living room. I can re remember exactly, like, what part it was, like, her holding the knife, like, what, as you see the hallway and the cloud, the room is filling with smoke. And you see the figure of Ghostface just whoosh, past the camera, and it's like it's that opening scene terrified me. Like, because I feel like even as a nine year old, like that is the most realistic. It's horrifying. Like rewatching it every time, I'm like, this is still so scary. I know exactly what's gonna happen. I know exactly what's gonna happen. But you still get scared. You still want her to get mm -hmm. out. You're like, you're so close. Mm -hmm. And it's like every time you watch it, you hope. Especially with her else parents. Happens. Her parents being right there kills me every time. Oh, no. Like she could have thrown a rock or something, but you know. It's my worst nightmare of life, the fact that she screams out in her voice because he stabbed her, like, she can't scream. Like, that. we've all had nightmares about that, yeah? Oh, Where we're like, yeah. I need to scream for my life, and she literally can't. Although, this time watching it, I was like, dude, throw the phone. Throw Something. the phone at your she's mom. She's holding on to that thing for the, the fucking entire dome. time. The fact that it's, how it's not in her hand when she's hanging from that I tree know. is beyond me. Like, there's, there, she could have done something. Like, However, I, I do... I, I, I say that, but then I hate when people are watching. I'm like, well, I would have. I'm like, in that, mo I have anxiety. Yes. I probably, my flight, or like in my head, I'm like, oh, I, I would I would run. But would I? But I don't, IRL. you don't know until you're actually in that totally. situation. And so. obviously she's not thinking like, no. let me throw, let me use like physical whatever right I, now. I, I wouldn't, I would have, she was, she's supposed to be 16 years old. Yeah. I wouldn't, no, no. absolutely not. I would have, I would have died too. Yeah, and the fact that she fought that long is pretty lit. Absolutely. To be honest. So I, I completely feel you on that. But yeah, when she's hiding behind the TV, I'm like, that's exactly what I would do. Like, where can I crawl into a little ball? Just like, please go away. During like, that scene when she's hiding behind, by the way, I'm, I know we're, we're going to get there, but um, mm -hmm. if you listen carefully, the next time you watch it, the Halloween theme is so playing softly in the background. So what, what, I mean, you talked about a little bit, but the first watch, it was just the opening scene. You were hooked or did it, was it like multiple watches and you became multiple increasingly watches. obsessed? Yeah, for sure. Okay. I, th I don't remember. It's gotten so, I remember watching the opening scene. I don't remember anything in between and I watched it. I don't remember ever even having the, I always remember watching it knowing that Stu and Billy are the killers. Like I don't remember that first shock because I watched it so I think I was just well I was also 9 to 10 so like I, I knew what was going on but I didn't really process it so I, by the time I was like 13 14 years old able to get the jokes and understand what was actually happening it still wasn't as big of a shock factor to me which is why it's always fun for me to find people who have never watched it mm -hmm. and that's how I, f I feel like I feed that missing you know puzzle piece that I never got when I was younger because I was just hooked at, at a very young age and I couldn't stop watching it okay. my two favorite movies as a kid were tight or sorry titanic scream and cruel intentions oh as a, a nine-year-old boy <laughs> no i saw titanic like, in theaters and i'm like well i Yo. did too but cruel intentions as a nine-year-old kid <laughs> as a nine-year-old queer kid uh, yeah. like that it did like, oh. it did a lot for me for sure no but i saw not uh, yeah. only up until i found out that um ryan uh Phillippe's 
uh, has a butt double and then it, the magic was lost. Oh, so I'm what? sorry to, to break your heart, but it's a butt double. Mm. Well, Shay and I both grew up in households where we were allowed to watch whatever the fuck we wanted. We also both had older Same. siblings. My dad, gave, I feel, my dad never gave me the talk because I feel like, I mean, he, I came out of the womb with a limp wrist. <laughs> so I feel like he, I, I had very, I had access to HBO. So I would watch like, you know, Bunny Ranch and all that and stuff and real sex and all that. So. I love that he was just like, mm, don't have to worry about it. <laughs> well, because like, how, how is he going to have this conversation? Because he's like, um, I'm not, how can he have this conversation when he's not even sure what happens? Mm, right. You know? <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. But I think too, having older siblings, because I know my sisters would think it was funny to show me scary moves and watch me like freak out. Like, ah. So I have a very similar experience where I don't, I saw it so early and I, I remember on my first viewing, I was just like, why are they stabbing each other? Like that, that like sussed me out. And I, even as a kid, I was like, they really like, want to fuck. <laughs> like this is, I'm feeling a lot of things right now. There's, there's a part where like they're in the video store and even like, I know they're like teasing Randy and like Matthew Little, like he's like, and what would be your motive? And he's like tickling his earlobe. There's yes. so much homoeroticism in that movie. And I think that's one of the reasons right why it's a him. queer. Always. It's such a queer movie. Like so many gay people love this movie. It's their favorite movie, their favorite horror movie. Oh, yeah. Rose McGowan's hard nips throughout the whole movie. Oh, like yes. sent me to a new planet. We'll get there. You'll have to remind me. But I so my boyfriend is a huge Charmed fan. And so he's in the middle mm. of showing me Charmed. And they were doing a um, screen thing for, um, you know, like you can do a meet and greet, a virtual meet and greet. Ooh. And I was like, I'm not going to get this for myself. I'm going to get this for my boyfriend. Aww. However, you need to ask my question <laughs> because like you're meeting her because of Charmed. You get to have this inter interaction with her because of Charmed. You have to ask my question because it's a Scream related event. Right. And she's the sweetest. Their, their interaction was like two minutes long and Aww. it was so sweet. And Which is so long for something oh, like yeah, that. Oh yeah. And she's the nicest person. But my question, I, I had him ask, what would she, if she had lived and she found out that it was Stu, what would she have done? That's a great fucking question. And she said that she thinks that she was such a protector of Sydney that she would she would have killed him. She would have been absolutely pissed and would have just gone down. Like even if she ended up dying along with it, just just you know trying to kick his ass no matter what. She would be like, I don't care if you were my boyfriend or not. That has nothing to do with it. You tried to kill my best friend, dude. Yeah. Absolutely, you can see that in her eyes, like throughout the whole movie. She is well, while she's alive, sad face. Right. Um, you can see that she's just like, dude, fuck everyone. Like even to you know Gail. Oh yeah, absolutely. She's oh, just her, like, no, I'm gonna nice fuck you well, up, sweetie. Mm -hmm. But it was really. It was it warmed my little gay heart because Nate, as she was explaining this, Nate said like, "Bam, super bitch." She's like, right, sit, uh, Tatum, super bitch. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> so but yeah, it, it was. I'm he, glad that he had to have that moment. I'm glad that I got to have my my question answered. But yeah, I, no, I Rose literally got goosebumps when you were saying that because, like, what an awesome alternative ending. Oh yeah, where she doesn't die, and that's exactly so I what happened. I when I made my original Scream remake, it was just honestly a shot for shot. I was 21. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the pro the concept of like you know doing something different. And I Nate was telling me that I better hope you guys don't get like super popular because I'm going to expose my idea mm -hmm. that I'm currently working on is that because how can you do a screen remake when you really think about it? How can you remake that movie? Mm -hmm. Tell it from Billy and Stu's perspective. That would be fantastic. Well, now that they're you the put main it out, make it make them the main characters. It. Now people can't steal it. Yeah. And then I also have like a an alternate ending where they may or may not be the only ones, mm -hmm. but in a much better and more. Um, believable way than scream four uh, scream three executed so well yeah that brings me to another i'm gonna skip ahead what do you think about the scream arcs and the continued scream universe i think i it's my favorite franchise my favorite horror fran well yeah it is my still my favorite horror franchise um i think they've done an excellent job at like they ch the, it changed they horror when horror changes as a genre the movies change themselves like the scream franchise when you think about the first movie there's a line when the sheriff says what are you doing with a t cellular telephone son by the second movie there's a couple cell phones but most of the time it's landlines and then by the third which is which was made in 2000 like they're using nothing but cell phones and then by the time we get to scream four iphones are introduced so like as long as technology is updated and they find a very clever way to incorporate it, I think that, like which they have been doing. This last one, there was you know I don't know if any of you guys have seen it yet, but they did a the security alarm at the beginning, which is like because it's electronic, it was like you know it was unlocking itself, and I think that was a very clever way to do it. So I think that it, as long as they can they adapt with the horror genre, which they've been doing, I think it just. I used to think after Scream Four that 
it was going to be the I, I mean i feel like we all thought that at one point like i thought scream 3 was the end then scream 4 i for sure thought the, that was yeah, the, end, like, now this the passing it. of Wes craven i was like it's never going to happen again and i remember being pissed when i found out the news until i found out that it was going to be done by the same people who did ready or not and then my perspective changed but i think after this one they've really set a bar high to where i think this could potentially go on for a very very long time they, yeah that would be cool and I, I do like how it's always like sydney centered but they're mm -hmm. always finding cool ways like well this mix six is not oh it's not Campbell is not returning oh and it, it's a cause a great divide between the scream community but i personally believe in my for myself having been a fan of these movies for over 25 years that the ending of five spoiler alert was such a great I, in my head was a great like it was a it was a passing of the torch mm -hmm. in my opinions like it was a very it ended her story beautifully spoiler alert she, you find out that she's married to um this guy named mark who is detective mark kincaid from scream 3 so she's married to patrick dempsey amazing and yeah we're a spoiler heavy podcast yeah Spoil oh yeah I've, I've heard. <laughs> and she has two daughters like she's li like at what what more she, this is her this she deserves this right she can move on she's now. earned <laughs> yeah. this a thousand times her over. mother is dead her boyfriend her, her her boyfriend her old boyfriend who, who she took lost her virginity, virginity oh, i hate that part oh. who took her virginity and then she found out two hours later that he killed he's the one, like you know like just let her have peace so i understand that she is a heart and soul of these movies but i think sydney prescott as a character she deserves some peace and I think it's time to let her go and I just am grateful that we are getting Courtney Cox back however that being said I mean when the trailer for this last one came out I feel like we all had an inkling about David Arquette we all knew and I honestly without even having any footage yet I feel like this might be Gail's farewell oh. in six which I also I also difference. realized Gail has never had a phone call with Ghostface <gasps> ever in six movies dun, dun, dun. I've only seen, to be totally honest with you, I've only seen one, four, and five. I haven't seen two or three. So three is kind of like the the fan um, redheaded stepchild. It's not great, especially the killer. It's 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 bad. It's just bad. And but four was a great redemption. I I think my opinion about four has changed over the last decade. I think I think at the time I was just excited that we had a new screen movie. I mean, it's hard not to get excited. Uh, but. But, and, and you mentioned, like, Scream, part of the joy is that it changes with horror. Mm -hmm. And and, I'm ho and ho hopefully you can answer this question, but I know that when Scream came out, it was like, oh, like, this is fucking changing the horror genre. This is reviving it. So can you talk a little bit more about, like, why people thought horror needed to be revived and, like, wh how it revived? Well, at the time, I think we're, it's kind of where they were now is kind of where we are or where we've been the last 20 years. I feel like at, at that time, it was only sequels. There was nothing original. Like, Friday the 13th had been going on for such a long time. Halloween had been going on for so long. At the, right before Scream was released... H2O hadn't come out yet, but H2O was kind of directly inspired because of Scream's success. But once Scream came out, it revived the genre in a way that no one could ever thought possible. So if horror, if horror fans had a, a movie again. Um, and the release of this movie and the success of it launched like a subsequent like genres, like... Um, just factory like urban legend i know what you did last summer uh, which i know what you did last summer was written by the same person who wrote scream and scream 2 kevin williamson i love him so much mm -hmm. he also created dawson's creek oh yeah and um, i remember watching all those movies yeah as like a seven eight nine year old like way way too yeah. young but i just you know you like to be scared and i do feel like your child brain just like skips over the more complicated or like sex stuff and you're just like mm, don't yeah. get that but then it's really fun to go back as an adult and be like ah it was so successful that the first movie came out in December of 96 and Scream 2 was released in December of 97. They're like, let's get Which is almost what happened rolling. with Scream 6 after the success of Scream 5, which like, it was called Scream, but I feel like for continuity and just to make things easier, I just still say Scream 5 or 5 Cream because, you know, there's they always add the S somewhere. The five cream. So in 3, <laughs> it was like S-C-R 3 mm. A-M, mm. but they couldn't do it for, for 5. Very so. MySpacey. Yeah, they, the <laughs> cast and crew, they got um, shirts made. It's Ghostface and he's holding a bunch of milk cartons that say um, cream on them and there's exactly 5. Oh, so, so smart. 5 Cream. But, so smart. Um, yeah, so I think it was just, it, it's, it set off a new wave of horror movies that were very similar, you know, Urban Legend, I know what you did last summer. It's, it's it still followed the same formula. But I think it was just the, it was the, uh, you know, what are those called? The 
defibrillator? How do you say that word? Oh, oh the defibrillator. defibrillators. It was Defib- just a, <laughs> I don't know why I made a Scream was the defibrillator sound. of the genre <laughs> the that it needed. The opposite of life saving. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, defibrillator. Yeah. Which is also used in Scream 4 to kill, to kill someone. So you've talked about, you know, why you like these movies, but what what do you think it came got you coming back for more? Was it like the <laughs> the beautiful relationship between Stu and Billy? <laughs> that for sure. Um I am I just obsessed with Nev Campbell. I just I I cared so much about these characters, I think for sure, and just it did something it was the first in my opinion, I think, to be the first horror movie that was self-aware. It was a horror movie about horror movies. And like at the time you didn't really talk about other movies you know it's like very meta yeah it was very meta which didn't even i feel like that was kind of that word almost like owes itself to scream because of you know and camp and all that all that good stuff but i i love the 90s lingo i love the acting i love the outfits i love the soundtrack i don't i think there's maybe sort of like a um what's that that word when you when you're person get when the captive when you fall in love with your captor Oh, what Stockholm that? Syndrome. Stockholm I feel like it's almost like a Stockholm Syndrome because I've grown up with it for this long. But I think the mystery of it, too. Like, I, I don't think they expected it to be so successful that it would even spawn a sequel. And it was just supposed to be the ending was just supposed to be the shock value. But once they announced a sequel, it, you know, every one of those fans was like, OK, who is it now? Like, it, bec- it became when two was released it became a fun game for all of us as well to you know try and guess who the killer is and who the opening kill is going to be like stuff that they didn't mm-hmm. intend to become culturally iconic is now culturally iconic um having someone famous die in the opening um mm-hmm. having more than one killer having the killer be male female or what have you and maybe hopefully f- future you know installments will be you know gender neutral and like even this last one was very big on you know, um, having uh, LGBT LGBTQ characters and just being they're, it's they're very real. They're people. I saw myself in those movies. I saw myself as Jamie Kennedy. I saw myself mm-hmm. as Hayden Panettiere. I saw myself as Jasmine Savoy. Like I, they were the they were me. I was watching myself, which is why I think. Um, unfortunately, since I know you said you're a very spoiler heavy podcast, which is why it was so heartbreaking. If you ask any fan that Randy dies and scream too yeah i did i was truly like no it's heartbreaking but they had to do it yeah but he provides so much and i think he invited that meta commentary because he throughout the first one was like who's the killer Mm -hmm. motives incidental what's the great line it's the millennium motives incidental Incidental. (laughs) that's so good yep so and it's heartbreaking which is why i you know there was four survivors in this last installment so i have a feeling that's gonna change Oh Again. man! You know, yeah, as long as the internet the exists, so and as long as you know, Reddit is a thing, and all this stuff. Like I have, I my my dream. I just have this dream where like just there's an ending existence. where a killer is dying, and like their final words are like, "There's more of us." Like as long as there are fans, like we're never gonna go away. Like copycats. Yeah, exactly. Because oh. like stab, you not only are is this is. Scream a franchise that is self-aware of itself and uh, is a franchise about horror movies themselves the horror movies that we love that we grew up with but now you have this fictional universe of stab as well that they can they have so much material to to use so So true it could be endless well I and I just want to now give you carte blanche to talk about like any scream trivia like I mean I'm a anything you want scenes you love from the first movie in particular like go crazy whatever you want to talk about my favorite piece of trivia, which like I feel like a lot of people do know, but it's that so that Drew Barrymore, excuse me, I just bumped up, was originally <laughs> cast as Sydney Prescott, mm-hmm. and two weeks before filming, told Wes Craven, "I don't want to be Sydney anymore. I want to be Casey Becker." And here's why. This was at the height of like Never Been Kissed. This was each, like this was her. I would say like. <sighs> I was going to say Jennifer Lawrence, but I feel like that was like, sounds a bit dated. Jennifer Lawrence is Florence telling Pugh. this. Florence Pugh. Yeah, she was having her, fl- oh, God, mm. get me started. <laughs> She's having her moment. Like, this was like, she, you know, so she was like, if I die in the first 15 minutes of this movie, no one's going to know what to expect. Yep. So true. And she was only like 20 mm-hmm. at this time. She was on the poster and shit, right? Yeah. She yep. on all the marketing. Uh, she was in the posters. And she had no idea, right, that she was going to be on the poster at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is so rad. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Another one was, oh man, um, they decided to film the shot of Dewey going into the ambulance last minute. Oh, 
<laughs> because they had a very positive reaction to because they just loved David Arquette in general. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but in, even that, his character is written to be kind of like a, um, a. Uh, I was gonna say Daddy Patty because our friend, <laughs> our friend Brittany, shout out to Brittany. She loves Patrick Warburton, and she is a huge. So she calls him Daddy Patty. Um, but Daddy Patty was like Dewey was supposed to be kind of like a Daddy Patty character, and David Arquette was like, no, I don't. I think he should be kind of like goofy. Yeah. Which you know, for for the, the for the writers of Scary Movie paid off. So. I think so hard. I think he's like one of everyone's favorite characters of all time. Not everyone. I have my friend, my friend Joe, who I who I bonded over, scream over when I moved to Reno. Um, but they did make a good point, especially in four. They were like, "What? What did he do? Tell me what he did." So. Provided charisma. <laughs> but I think that's part of it. Is like you have to establish that the cops are not going to fucking help you. And oh, how yeah. do you do that? Like by making them like fucking bumbling idiots. Yeah. Who are there's like a new detective. Donuts there's a new detective coffee. in uh, Scream Six being played by uh, Dermot Maroney. Mm -hmm. Even even so. like on this, you know, like obviously I know it's going to happen, but I'm like Dewey, fucking watch her. You had one yeah. job. Yeah. You had one job, and yeah. you and you couldn't do it for yeah. more than fifteen minutes. I think he overstayed his welcome as a character. Personally, um, I think the shot. I think he. Uh, I love him and Gail's relationship. However, I feel like um, the one that got. I do remember him almost dying in Scream Two. I remember watching that, being like, it heart my heart breaking. Like first it was Randy and then Dewey. So I think um, personally, I think Dewey should have bit bit the dust in the second movie. Real instead of Randy, you think? I think. I mean, I think they could have done both because, Ooh, like, yeah. this is a sequel. You know, go big or go home. Mm -hmm. Shock value, all that. Ugh. But yeah, because didn't he, get spoiler alert, didn't he die in the last one he that did. just came out? That made me sad, but also, oh, I, I mean, as as much of a fan coming. as I am, oh wait, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, like, I knew it was coming, but I definitely agree. Yeah, I was going to say, as much of a fan as I am, I feel like you're, like, the expert over here, so for you to say, like, he extended his welcome way beyond, I'm like, yeah. I believe I, you. I do say that, l I do love David again, I love Dewey, um, however... But yeah, I think they made it very clear in the trailer. Like the tra trailer had a very, was a very, I'm not one of those people who avoids trailers. Mm -hmm. I love it. I respect mm -hmm. those who do, but I think I was so, I click paused this trailer, man. I was like, click pause, stop. Because so <laughs> I've been waiting for so long. So I knew like there was a shot of him walking down the, uh, the hospital, hospital hallway. Wing. And I was like, this is it. Oh it's no. It's going to happen. Because they also made the mistake of showing a shot of uh, Courtney Cox, like screaming, like being held back as, while there was like ambulance in the back. I was like, had you left that shot out of the trailer? Mm -hmm. I, my, it wouldn't have been that in my but sure but enough you already knew. sure enough you just had you had the feeling you had the uh, but it was good it was very emotionally and also considering their real life history it was very like it was good to see them on screen again considering because I know they're good friends which is always nice but mm -hmm. it was, considering their history I think made his death a little bit more heartbreaking to watch yeah and I, even as a kid though like seeing her I was like wait that's the lady from friends you know my kid brain was like this is weird. She's playing like the same person. And I <laughs> didn't. I didn't watch Friends until 2019 or whenever it came on Netflix. Oh my god, really? 15. Yeah, wow. I didn't start watching Friends until later, which is funny because I'm a huge fan now. Yeah. Um, but every time I rewatch it, I can always tell which movie she was filming, like which Scream movie she was filming, based off her hair. The hair. Mm -hmm. I mean, all these 90s stars and their fucking hair. The Rachel. Who can forget? And you were telling us before, and when we were in the car on the way over here, that you've actually gotten to see some of the filming locations, which I, is so fucking I cool. I with my friend Joe. The same, we bonded over Scream. And we lived, we were living in Reno. It was about a two-hour drive. It was like, it was a Santa Rosa area, but every single location was at about 40 minutes away from each other. And the first place we went to was the Stumacher house, which is in the middle of nowhere. Like, this, this party absolutely could have happened. Like, in the woods. In the woods. Like, Ugh. no, you're... You could probably walk to your nearest neighbor in like 10, 15 minutes. That's a um, long walk. It's a long walk. And I remember it was up on this hill. We pull we pull over. I see the a for, a for sale sign with a bunch of flyers inside. And I, I grab one of the flyers and I just see a picture of it. And I'm just like, okay, go here. Like turn. And the, the gate is supposed to be closed, but it's open. So we're like, you know, put it in the fucking bucket. Let's go. So we drive up and we see it. it's so small because mm -hmm. it's on this hill. And mm -hmm. we pull up, we, we see it, we get out. And there's like a pickup truck there and where this little like chihuahua sitting in the back being very chill and the gardener's there and he's just like, you guys here to just look at the house? I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah we might be buying absolutely. property in the yeah, area. We, <laughs> you know, like a pipe. Wearing, wearing flannel, <laughs> pushing up our sunglasses, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, we, we have money. Um, but he's like, yeah, you can just, you can walk, look around, just you know, obviously you can't go inside. 
And luckily for us, the house didn't have any curtains or blinds. And so we were lucky enough to snap some photos of like the entry foyer with the stairs. And then, of course, the infamous kitchen uh. where, you know, the, everything goes down, which is absolutely insane because it's the picture I have. There's like this tile work around the, the stove that has been the same for the last 25 years, like so much so that in Scream 5, they built a replica, like a set for of the, the Mocker House, and they kept that the, the uh, tile work because it's, it hasn't changed but eventually the guy was like did you know that scream was filmed here and we kind of look at each other like mm, like what that's why we're here. <laughs> and he had said that he had been working there 25 he had still been working for the same company at the time and was telling us like where the f- well there was a fake barn over here i remember all the lights and i just remember joe and i like just kind of starry-eyed like like little girls like with on our stomachs with our hands and our chin and our <laughs> oh feet just gosh. like going back and forth like we were we were just he made that experience so much more like fulfilling for us and it was just so bizarre to be stand the only three people standing on that land when 20 20 years prior you know it was filled with the cast and the crew and of the most legendary people you know just making a little movie that didn't know that would somehow turn into a halloween costume yeah let shout out to you gardner hope you're listening spawn, to this you know six sequel five sequel now but i'm sure it's gonna be six mm-hmm. i'm sure and was seeing the garage crazy too i'd be like that's oh, the garage that was great. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. they didn't have the uh the door the little mm-hmm. doggy door on oh, okay i feel like all of us though even in 1996 was like who like uh, in in the house yeah going to the backyard but who what, what there wasn't a cat door in the garage leading back into the house yeah like you want your dog to just run out yeah <laughs> like it doesn't i don't understand any, yeah like, uh, run away please yeah i think it made for an excellent death but mm-hmm. um yeah, another piece of trivia she could actually fit through the, the door like very easily so she had yeah to, like, she's tainty yeah, she's very dainty and i'm watching i was like there's no way that garage doors operate this way but we will just pretend we'll just pretend for the sake of Cinematic. Yeah, for the sake of a cinematic beheading. Yeah, but that was <laughs> my best, best We're days swishing. of my life mm-hmm. for sure. That that was a surreal experience that I'll never forget. Luckily, even as a kid, I was like, mm, I don't think that could happen. <laughs> the beginning scene, I was like, that could happen. But then I was like, mm, yes. I don't think that could happen. It could happen to me. I'm very, I'm very, I've been the same way since sixth grade. So I feel like it might, <laughs> I, I bruise like a peach. You think a garage door could take you? I out? think it could. I think it absolutely <laughs> could. If I got stuck, it could. Bless, Bless you. you. Thanks. <laughs> any other trivia you were telling us a hocus pocus crossover oh, man. i did i was gonna say they the uh right after they killed the witches the they play around a fountain in the park and that is the same fountain that they filmed the uh, friends intro oh wait so not a scream but still crossover except that courtney Cox. oh 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 and oh i do have something oh. i have something i remembered that i'm so glad i forgot to mention earlier mm-hmm. that the outside of allison's house is not what the inside looks like. The exterior shot is just the exterior shot. I'm going to blow your mind right now. Okay. The interior of that house is a very famous house. They use it for a lot of movies. The inside of that house is the location. It was the location that they used for Sarah Michelle Gellar's character in Scream 2. Spoiler Ooh. alert, she gets killed in this, in this house. This house is also miss trunchbull's house <gasps> oh matilda. my god yeah. previous episode matilda listen if you haven't oh my god it's like the room where she you know she thinks that magnus is like talking to her that's the same room where sarah michelle geller's on the phone like getting a phone call from ghostface like running up the same stairs like that how the exterior is different the exterior in miss in matilda and scream 2 is accurate mm. the exterior in hocus pocus is not but the house exists. The house in Hocus Pocus 2, or Hocus, well, I mean, it's out, but <laughs> in Hocus Pocus exists, but it does not look how it does in the film. Because that is in LA. believe. I think I have a bit of a homework assignment for you, actually. Okay. Because in our Don't Look Under the Bed episode, when they're in the living room by the stairs, I was like, this looks like a familiar house. Oh, okay. This looks like a house that Disney might have used for a lot of things, mm. but I couldn't remember anything. I'll place it. So I'll if you it. happen to watch it and you're like, oh, mm. that's a very famous set. I will feel vindicated. I was in the we were at Lowe's the other day and the song was on and I was like I I was like how the how do I know the song? I was like I know the song. And it was like it was just like I can't remember the exact lyrics, but it was just like you're an ocean, you're an ocean, settle down, exactly settle down. What's the commotion? Don't tell so me. So I Google it. Motocrossed. 
Oh, I knew it. I Google baby. it and it's fucking motocross. I'm like, how no, no, sure. do I? Because I remember like that. The, it said motocross, and then it was like the, him in the air with the. the yeah, I loved that song. It's the part where the dude is training her. Oh yes, yes, like, yes. She's like, oh, I'm falling for dude. Yes. That movie made me so gay, bro. Sick. Like Sick. so gay. I'm it's pan. It's very Mul- Mulan and um, yeah. I forget his name, but uh, situation. Yeah, I'm in love with everyone in that movie. So it's a very good. Movie. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, thank you so much for telling us all of this amazing info and trivia. I am honored. Thing. We have, yeah, we do. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. We didn't give you this one in advance because oh, I gosh. didn't want you thinking about it too okay. hard. But we're going to do a Frick Mary Kill, <gasps> as our friend Whitney likes Ooh, to call it. Okay. I think you're probably going to guess who the first three are. Yeah. But it's Bill, okay. Stu, or Dewey. Oh, okay. Well, then Fuck Mary Kill. Mm, based on my previous statement i'm gonna have to kill dewey bye bye dewey um (laughs) definitely without a shadow of a doubt especially 2022 frick skeet ulrich yes oh so sexy eating like a fine wine Mm -hmm. and and who wouldn't want to marry shaggy yeah, he'd give you a good life. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. He's a uh, sweet guy, a sweetheart. Like, okay. yeah, I would, uh, I would agree with that. One thousand percent agree. I'm so surprised we're all on the same page. Mm-hmm. Makes so much sense. Okay, do you want me to give the second one? Yeah. All right. Number two, we got Casey, Sydney, or Tatum. Fuck, Mary, kill, baby. Remember, hard nips. Mary. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna marry Tatum. I'm gonna marry Tatum. Yes, she is fun. She's so spunky. She is and fun and cute. Fuck Casey and kill, kill Sydney. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. <gasps> he's Casey the next like she's ghost face. You heard it here she's first. Flirty and fun. I don't know. Wow. Okay. Well, what's yours? I do love that she's like I might have a boyfriend But like you sound kind of hot Because yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I feel like if that A, a remake of Scream in 22 would just be like Is this my boyfriend are you trying to get me to Catch me like cheating on you talking mm-hmm. to another guy Like it wouldn't work Like yeah you're catfishing me which yeah, wasn't exactly. even like a like, word is, Who, we is, this? who, is, who yeah. really is this I would I'm sorry Casey I'm gonna kill you again I'm gonna kill you again yeah. But I think I would fuck Tatum and Mary Sydney I mean she's had a hard life Yeah I was like I could, I could fix you baby What about you Shay <laughs> Actually, yeah, I completely agree with Stacy because Tatum would be so fun to have sex yeah, with. Exactly, she would just—I feel like she would just be like. It kind of bums me out that like Stu. Do you think Stu was like, oh man, like no. a little like sad a little bit? Yeah, sad that he's like because she's probably amazing in sack. Mm, oh, for that reason, yeah, but I feel like he was so fucking in love with Billy oh, yeah. that he didn't give that much yes. of a fuck. Yes, but I mean, have we established that Stu even knew? Like, do we get that definitively in the movie? I don't know that we do. No. It's possible that Billy killed her, and it's Sue doesn't tr- yes. even know. Yeah, that's true. And that's then he, true. Like, I would always like to assume that he kind of just, you know, if he's if he's sacrificing his own house, you know, I think it's always hilarious that like he's mad that his pa- well, I think never mind. I guess it makes sense that he's mad that his parents are going to be mad that he did it, mm-hmm. but they weren't going to be mad if it was you know Neil Prescott. You know, it's not your fault, honey. I feel like he for sure knew, and I think he was absolutely using her and I don't think he had feelings for her at all and I also do think that he like I think it was all kind of pre-planned mm-hmm. like I, feel I don't like think they he had all... feel, like maybe they had sex but like he he was definitely more emotionally invested in Billy yeah for sure yeah but I think maybe maybe he would have been too attached in the sense that he's like I can't kill her man mm-hmm. you're gonna have to do that one man like yeah. I feel like that was probably a conversation 100%. I don't know I can hear his little shaggy voice right now. He's so cute. He's adorable. And I know motive is incidental, but I'm just like, why kill Tatum? Like, I understand they have to kill Casey to, like, establish the, like, pattern. Maybe just so that when kill. Sydney dies, it seems random. Well, another piece of trivia. they uh, Principal Henry was not supposed to die. And the studio was like, it's been, you haven't killed anybody since Casey. <gasps> so what? we need somebody to die. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it ended up giving them a great... um escape plan for the uh, motive to get the rest of the party goers out of the house mm. since they mm. strangled his or uh, strung his body on the football field mm-hmm. and they also did say for like Casey obviously that wasn't it Stu who like dated her mm-hmm. they, didn't, they didn't really go yeah, into she that said, um you uh she's like I 
she she dumped him for Steve. <gasps> but then Tatum's like, I thought you dumped her for me. Mm-hmm. He's like, my daddy's full of shit. Well, I suppose killing Tatum does go with Randy's point that if you fuck, you're going to die. Mm-hmm. Period. Like, Period. sorry, these are morality tales, people. <laughs> you, you can't have fun. No. No. Mm-hmm. You gotta be a lame virgin. No offense, virgins listening. You're beautiful. <laughs> I'm like so bitchy for no reason. Love you guys. <laughs> we don't know any virgins. Get the fuck out of it. No, I'm just <laughs> what if we did? And we like, wow, I just thought of that. We probably know somebody who's a virgin. Hopefully they don't listen to the podcast. Sorry, guys. Like I said, you're beautiful. I don't yeah. know why I got so aggressive. And virgins would definitely listen to our podcast because it's are very virgin, entertaining. If you're listening and you are a virgin and you have a boyfriend and you've been together for a long time, just be very sure yes. that he is not responsible for your mother's death one year prior before <laughs> Oh, because then he's going to use that against you two hours later and I, you're going to feel disgusted with yourself. I did have like a note and an epiphany when I was watching it. I like literally wrote down this movie captures the terror of being manipulated by a teenage boy for sex. He spends the entire movie gaslighting her. Yeah. And I'm the like, this is movie. the true horror story. Like mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. But then when you first watch it, you know, like I, I, I mean, I don't remember having these feelings, but I, 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 I have get to have these feelings with people when I show them that the, for the first time. Where because at the beginning you're like, no, he's just a red hair. No, no. At first you're like, it's him. Well, no, he's just a red. Oh, right, like no, it's too obvious. Not him. Yeah. Oh, so like you know, which like movies fake kill people nowadays, like mm-hmm. all the time nowadays, and I feel like there's just something so special about the way screams execution of that that will just will never f- 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 hit the same way. Yeah, and the sexy, sexy, close standing and like whispering in the ear between Stu and Billy. It's just, I remember, yeah, I do remember that the first watch. I was like, I'm feeling things and I'm like picking up on stuff that I don't quite understand, but wow. (laughs) Yeah, even the parts where they're like stabbing each other, it was very hot, question mark. Uh, opened up a whole new situation for me. Um, no, but like, yeah, he's just like, give it to me, baby. I'm just like, Babes, like you have some things to work out in therapy for sure. You know, mm-hmm. let's talk about it. Self discovery, <laughs> self love. I'm you know? sure they fooled around. Just, mm-hmm. I would like to believe that they at least fooled around. Yeah. Oh, they sure. Yeah, they did for sure. Absolutely. Oh, and I'm sure they're like, oh, but it's not gay because we both have girlfriends. Yes. You know. Yeah. Yep. So it doesn't like count. Oh, uh, God bless him. Because I don't know any 17-year-old who would be that hell-bent on the fact that my mommy left. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't love me anymore. Yeah, it's like, no. I know. And I love how I was like, you have to move on. It's like, she has to move on, motherfucker. You're orchestrating a very complex plot because your mom left you. So someone's not over it. My favorite part about that scene is like, I was in jail, remember? I'm like, wash your hands. I know, gross. I know, it's hands. been a while. You went straight to, sc- like, I understand if you went, how very admirable of, admirable of you to go straight to school from the from the prison cell but but it kind of felt that way as a kid right yeah like now as adults like we really don't have to do a lot of stuff but when you're a kid you're like i have to go to school it's like "Mm, you really didn't also i am talking about a well i was about to say straight but like a man Mm -hmm. not all men but hashtag hashtag some men but all men Hashtag wash your ass. Dude. I, you said what <laughs> I was. That's another thing that I've been. You know talk- that there's a thing going on on TikTok now where it's they're like it's a challenge. They're like, like where girls are asking. Yeah. And I've seen a couple of them were like, well, the water. I'm sure the, the water trickles down. It's like, like, well, no, that's not what I'm asking. You. I'm asking you, do you use both hands to? Wanna? And they're like, no. The soapy water like gets there. I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, like straight up, just don't even touch it. Cheeks. Yeah, you got to spread the cheeks. Oh, you know squat down a little bit depending on the the cheekage the, the amount of cheekage and the angles that you got going on it is a damn disgrace let me tell you what it's wild how they, like, the, how i've they been talking about it all week <laughs> i don't understand like how are they not how are they uncomfortable how are they not uncomfortable how do they not have rashes how maybe they do, maybe they do. <laughs> Okay, you know what? I was just going to say something. I'm not going to say it. You guys. Oh, my God. Oh, no. I'm like, well, I'm going to say it, but I'm also scared. I don't want to say any names, but I've seen a good amount of um, streakage, you oh, know? No. And it's not... Skid mark. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag throw up my entire soul. If you are still... If you still get like skid marks as an adult, 
<laughs> How did we go from scream to this? Life. Look at your They're choices. so related. Yeah, it's like I don't want to end here, but maybe we should. Like the true horror is people leaving skin marks. <laughs> That's horrifying. There's an episode of Sex in the City about that. What'd you say? There's an episode of Sex in the City. I know Miranda, where Miranda was Steve. Mm-hmm. 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 You already know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's just like, I'm just so comfortable with them. And then she's like doing his laundry and it's like, ring, ring, ring. It's just like a close up. Me and Nate do our laundry separately. Really? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, we always have. Like, it's never been like a, are you, okay, cool. Like, we just always have. That's dope. Yeah. Okay, I love that fact because our friend Lindsay and Patrick have like separate lives in their marriage and it cracks me up. They do. They buy separate like eggs, milk, That I did not know. Like entirely separate groceries. Well, she is, she's a health nut. In the best way, so I, I I can see that being like, hey, these are my eggs for the week. Don't touch my eggs, otherwise my flow will be all, you know. But she knows that I love this about her. So she's, oh, absolutely. She sent me a picture and she goes, look, buying two Brita filters, and I was like, why? And she goes, well, I like my room or my water room temp, and Patty Magic likes the gold. So I was like, oh, okay, all, all right. About compromise. You right, but it's just it cracks me up. Shay's mind is blown. <laughs> but they're very happy together, so it works oh, out. Oh yeah. No, that shit is cool. And actually, like, I've heard a lot of married couples say, like, no, 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 we have full separate bedrooms. And the, got, good for you. I'm glad and that that's they can sick. make it work. I can't do that. I'm very, I'm, I don't know. Like, I need to have, like, he snores like a banshee and I love him. But <laughs> I, we have, like, a white noise fan. I sleep with, like, ear plugs. But, like, I need to, like, our toes at least to need to be touched. Aww. I can't. If that's empty, so sweet. It's just not. I, I respect it and I get it. Mm-hmm. Um if his snoring was any worse then I absolutely would probably consider two bedrooms but yeah my wife <laughs> right, right, right over here has to wear earplugs if we're in the same room whatsoever she has them on, fucking motherfucking on her and she has extra pairs to give to our friends I, if the, we're... I do that I have a white noise machine on top of an actual fan going and then I have a sleep mask as well I've turned Stacey, into Stacy you need now. to step up your game babes just for me I'm I, I snore like uh, I don't know, fucking James Gandolfini. I don't know. <laughs> it's not. Sleep, it's, it's not. Sleep masks do wonders, and I'll get. I'll get, even better. I'll get you the one that um Matilda's mom had. <gasps> oh, it's a. Oh my god. god. It's a frog guy, but I don't think it, it kind of looks like that though. You chose books. I chose looks. <laughs> that was book. Every look of hers in that movie is fucking incredible. Chef's like kiss. actually hot and cool as Chef's fuck. Kiss. Mm-hmm. I had no idea until recently that Danny DeVito directed it. Really? I had no idea. Yeah. Did you listen to our episode? I did. Oh, well, did. did you learn it there I before? Did. Oh. <laughs> I did. We're teaching the world. Oh, my God. We're professors. <laughs> we need honorary doctorates, baby. Also, so address us as professors. Do you guys now. watch Scrubs at all? Because Brendan Fraser has a great character storyline. And, no. like, it's it's a big deal in the, in the Scrubs fan community. Wow. He's a big character in Scrubs. No, I didn't well, watch Scrubs. He's like a big that. character. For a short amount of time, mm. spoiler alert. But mm. it is, it's, it is. Who I've had like, I'm sure you guys have seen like, you know, he's getting back out there. Yeah. And, like, um, this girl posted her thing and she, uh, her interaction with him, and it was about Scrubs and how much it affected her and how uh. it's her favorite performance of his. And I recommend wow. checking it out. It is wow. a heartbreaking. Oh my God. I'll see if I can uh, get some episodes like a some yeah. season, whatever, but uh, but yeah, that's um, high praise. A very great character arc in scrubs that wow. is should not be overlooked i had no idea fascinating yeah. amazing okay well i think we can end it on that no thank you again so much you, you are like the scream og you. do you want i you don't have to but if you want to share any social media handles any things you're working on anything oh, you sure. want to plug share promote my the instagram world. is brndnm i'm just a your average joe <laughs> but I am. I do work um, on uh, side projects a lot. I've been trying to work on uh, some filming something new for the last decade. I'm currently trying to figure out the kinks of a Stepford Wives adaption. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I'm gonna just. I'm a big fan of reboots, remakes. They don't bother me so much as long as you know they are done respectfully and um, in a way that can bring something something new. So. Yeah, and, and I think we're all really telling the same core stories, just in different ways. Anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. There's not enough, an original thought. Right. Anymore, I see on TikTok. Someone's like, "Oh, whenever I am, I do that. <laughs> I do that." <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay, well, thanks again Thank so you much. You're the best. We love you. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. on. We love anyone who is super passionate about movies from the era of a certain blue and oh, yellow yes. video rental store. Well, I I would go with my dad every Tuesday night, and we would get Reese's Pieces and mm. uh, a thing of popcorn at the checkout counter. So <sighs> love that Rancho and Cheyenne that is no longer there. 
Oh yeah, we were Buffalo Washington gals. Yeah, we were Buffalo. Uh, Rancho and Craig. I'm sorry. Buff Wash. Ooh, r- <laughs> Rancho and Craig. Mm-hmm. I used to live right there. Yeah. I know exactly what you're. I know which one you're talking about. I used to live about. right there. So. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Blockbuster bringing us all together. I know. Well, if you ever want me to come back, I would love to do so. Uh, thanks. We'll check in with about the movies and be Absolutely. like, I know you know about this one. Yes. We're like Brandon Corner. Yes. Or you could be like our horror expert Ooh, every I'm time we do horror too. movies. I'm here for that too. Yeah. Love it. You can even just send his voice memos. It'll be, oh, Great. Yeah. Oh, I'm so inspired. This Absolutely. is amazing. All right. I'll thanks, everybody. See you on the other side of the ep. Thanks. We love you so much. Bye. Wow. What an amazing guest. Honestly, I don't think we could have gotten anyone more passionate and cool regarding this particular movie yeah this particular franchise yeah that's true yeah the whole franchise he's like a full expert right true fan could probably like tell you exactly like what movie everyone dies and why like how oh yeah and he has his like own theories he's like that dude that has like uh what is it it's the always sunny meme where all the pictures are painted at the wall with like a red string and he's like okay like that's so sick yeah, he was like, incredible. So thank you again, Brandon. Thanks, Brandon. We're going to close out with our normal segments, but we also want to try something new. Yeah, Stacy thought of this while we were in the car. And I was like, you need to do this because I don't believe in myself right now to do this. But I think it'd be really funny. We're going to try. And feel free to shout out reminders if I'm like screwing things up. Because what we're going to try to do is I'm going to try to run through the plot of the entire movie in under two minutes. I believe that you can absolutely do it. But now I'm like, what happens first? I know. <laughs> I know. That's why I was like, um, um, I don't know if I could do it. But I, I know you can do it. Okay. So you get your timer ready and you let me know when I should start going. Okay. Maybe give me like a 30 second warning. Okay. Should I do corporate bullshit first? Yeah. Let's do corporate bullshit. Then I'll do the summary. Okay. So Scream was made in... 1996 um it was written by kevin williamson and directed by wes craven and most of you probably know but if you don't wes craven also directed nightmare on elm street the og so giant deal Mm -hmm. um it is starring neve campbell of course oh my god scream queen herself yeah who plays sydney prescott of course she's like the main the main bitch um, we also got Drew Barrymore as Casey Becker, David Arquette as Dewey Riley, Courtney Cox as Gail Weathers, Matthew Lillard, aka Shaggy, as Stu. Is it Matcher? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. And then Rose McGowan as Tatum and Skeet Ulrich as Billy. As oh, and Jamie Kennedy. Billy. What did you say? As hot, greasy Billy. Uh, as like young Johnny Depp. Oh, God, brooding. Hasn't taken a shower in God knows how long. Which is something I love. Bye bye. Well, not really. We just talked about like washing our asses, but Mm -hmm. he's very hot. Um, And lastly, Jamie Kennedy playing Randy Meeks. Fucking amazing lineup there. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's see here. What do I got? Okay. So the release date was December 18th, 1996 for people in Los Angeles. Mm. But in the United States, it came out two days later, December 20th in 1996. Why another like not for Halloween? Just I know. Just in the middle of the winter. And I guess it's not really a Halloween movie, but still it's like yeah. it, it became like, I, and you know well, what another thing is? A show. Yeah. And I think the reason why kind of Brandon touched on it, but they really didn't believe it was going to be like anything big whatsoever Mm -hmm. so that's probably why they're like this isn't like a halloween movie like it's not important enough to be but it was obviously Mm -hmm. um did they know yeah they did they had no idea it's 111 minutes wow okay long it doesn't feel long no it doesn't at all fast uh angel number might i say Mm. um and right in our like time frame that we like um the budget was 14, 14 to fifteen million dollars. Okay, wow. And the box office made a hundred and seventy three million dollars. That's a lot. A lot of fucking money, yes. like over ten times the amount that uh, they were budgeted. Very nice. I didn't look up the Roger. Would Roger Ebert have? Oh, rated I'm sure this? he did. Okay, let me look this up. Yeah, I'm, f- I, I'm very interested to know what he would have said. Let's see. 
Uh, boop. Okay. Three stars. Okay. Uh, so he didn't and, hate it. What'd you say? He didn't hate it. No, didn't hate it, but he said, uh, Scream violates one of the oldest rules in movie history. It's about characters who go to the movies. <laughs> Lol. Oh, I I'm guess like, he doesn't what? like that. It's meta. I don't know. Why does he hate that? I don't know. Um, but yeah, three stars, which is pretty cool. And then I'm going to look up the Rotten Tomatoes because I actually didn't look that up either. Rotten Tomatoes. Scream. It got a... Come on now. Oh, that, oh, this is the 2022 one. No. I want the 1996 one. Okay, 80%. Okay, yeah. So, very warmly received. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of my top favorite horror movies of all time. And I just... I just love how it definitely continued the legacy of, like, every decade from even the 60s having like a famous slasher movie mm -hmm. and we were waiting for one in the 90s and then they came out from with one and it was Here just you fucking go. you're welcome yeah you're fucking welcome okay okay so i think it is time for the two minute the attempt attempt which i know you're gonna <laughs> murder <laughs> oh uh, well, we'll see i'm probably gonna forget a lot no well, well I'll, i can interject right yeah, say feel free to interject if i'm like forgetting stuff which i okay. know I will let's see Ready, set, go. Okay, so movie starts. It's Drew Barrymore. She's in a blonde wig. She is very pretty. Somebody calls her. Oh, it's scary. What's your favorite scary movie? And she's like answering trivia questions. But oh no, she gets one wrong. And then her football player boyfriend, he's dead, guts all over. Oh no. And then she runs and her parents come home, but she's already dead. And then it's like scream. And then you go to a high school and you see this brunette chick and her mom died a year ago. And it's very sad. And everyone knows about it, weirdly. And then um, everyone's talking about blonde Drew Barrymore being dead. And they're like, what? And then other people die. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I need help. Okay. So after that, she, uh, 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 they all decide, ooh, you know what? Since school's closing out, let's have a fucking party. Oh, yeah. So they all have a party at Stu's house. And then um, Courtney Cox is there and she's a reporter. And she's like, uh, I don't think that guy killed your mom like you said she did, Sydney. So you're a bad person. And Sydney's like, give me a goddamn break. Okay. My mom's dead. And then her boyfriend is gross and keeps pressuring her into sex. And she gives in. And then she's like, wait, you might be the killer. And he's like, I'm not the killer because look, I'm getting stabbed. I'm dead. And then she gets chased around by the scream looking guy and her best friend dies best friend gets decapitated by a garage door which would like i said never happen um the principal dies henry winkler he you think he's the killer for a little bit but he's not <laughs> 30 <laughs> seconds oh no <laughs> and then they have a confrontation in the house and she has to pick whether she believes billy or this like really nerdy video guy store who's very suspicious and then the two hot guys stab each other in the kitchen and then they try to frame her dad and then, <laughs> <Hot guys laughs> stab each other. And then it doesn't work and uh she wins did you say who it was? <laughs> oh yeah, the two hot guys were the killers the whole time. Oh my god, Billy and Stu are the fucking murderers. And Billy did it because he's sad about his mom being gone because Sydney's mom fucked his dad. How am I doing? Oh, I thought my alarm was on. Oh, ding 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 ding. <laughs> it, that was perfect. It. You it. fucking nailed it. Honestly, you yeah. did great. You That's... Said, did you say who the killers were? Yeah, I was like. The two hot guys stabbed like, each, each other in the kitchen. <laughs> That's all you need to Fucking know. Fucking in creds. I love every second of that. Oh, wow. Amazing. That was... Um, I don't think you guys realize that changed history for me, I'm to so be honest. I'm so stressed the entire time. Should we do that for every movie now? I think we could try. I think it's we should. It's so, so hard. It is It is hard, but you fucking nailed it in two minutes. That was... <laughs> ama I'm like shook right now. That was fucking I cool. I just like, at one point, I need help. I was like, like uh, mind. uh, and then what? a best friend dies. <laughs> yeah. And the two hot guys stab each other in the kitchen, and then uh, she wins. <laughs> she wins. That's all you need to know, okay? She fucking wins. Oh, um, you really I, I do have some notes. We talked a lot about my notes, but I'll just like go through them yeah. really quick. I wrote the opening font is aggressively 90s. This opening <sighs> scene is truly horrifying. Houses mm -hmm. with lots of windows are pretty, but so scary for this reason. 
popcorn smoke. Such a nice touch. Such a nice touch. Dude, yeah, the part that Brandon brought up where the whole kitchen was filled with smoke and then you see just shink and he like goes, you know, he, you see him running past is like fucking incredible. And uh, we talked about the whole concept of the main character dying early on in the film. Mm-hmm. This actually caused some drama at a trivia night I hosted. Really? Because I asked a question where I was I was seeking the answer scream. And I said, what movie does the main character like die early on? And then Katie felt strongly that the answer was Psycho. Because the main character dies. But I disagree because she doesn't die until halfway through the movie. That's true. It, it's not Drew within Barrymore the... dies within like the first 10 minutes. Yeah, within the first 10 minutes. Yep. But yeah, that's interesting that Psycho did kind of do that. Yeah, Psych- I think Psycho did originate that idea. But like you said, it wasn't... Like she's in the movie for a long time. It's almost like worse mm-hmm. because someone that you grow so fond right, of like, and like attached she's been to for an hour, and we have an hour left. What are we gonna do? Yeah, that is pretty wild, especially for that time. That's pretty fucking crazy. Yeah, but well, that's uh, what I had no, about the beginning. Yeah, right away, like mm-hmm. right within the first ten minutes. Right, like very quick. Um, so Drew Barrymore actually, I love her fucking hair in this too, mm-hmm. and the brown lipstick. And she actually took, like, she took a picture to the wig maker and was like, make this hair for me. And it's um, Michelle Pfeiffer and fucking Scarface. Oh, So she's like, make this exact wig for me. And so they did, which I thought was really cool. There's lots of cool fun facts. Like, she actually uh, produced the movie, but, like, like, her name isn't attached to it in that way. But she was, like, behind the scenes, like trying to make she was trying to make the movie happen nice yeah which i thought was very seek yeah and like her first like horror movie right so she probably was like very excited like ooh, this is different because yeah she's like america's little like sweetheart star yeah i think she did i don't know what's that movie called there's a movie called um poison ivy and it's not poison ivy from like the batman series but i don't know if that one was a horror movie i've never seen it oh, but beyond seen that yeah, she's, yeah, she's done. Like, like Brandon was like, like never been kissed. Yeah, like, I'm the little girl from ET. Mm-hmm. Yep. I th- and and to be so young and have it be so fun. Like she was literally 20 when this wow. came out. Like she's so good. She's so fucking good. You'd think that she's like 30 because she's yeah. just so great. She's got chops. She does have those the acting chops. the acting family chops, baby. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Do you have notes or should I just keep going through mine? Mine are very short, actually, because I just thought I would go off the top of the dome. Off the dome piece. Yeah, because I do love this movie very much. Um, Specifically, I love, like, all the nods to all the different horror movies that they make. You know, like, Wes Craven, fun fact, is dressed up as Freddy Krueger in the movie, kind of. Like, you mm-hmm. see, like, the garb. He's a janitor right before Henry Winkler gets iced. Um... And that's the director. I think I said that, but I can't remember. That was pretty cool. Linda Blair, I have to bring this up, is a news reporter. Hate it. Um, She's in in (laughs) it twice, and I fucking can't stand those scenes at all. Um, And then just like Halloween, they bring, you know, they bring up so much, so many different movie references because obviously these are teenagers who do love movies and they love horror movies and they talk about it all the time. And it's just kind of like, a string throughout the whole movie from beginning to end obviously like the first conversation is what's your favorite scary movie yeah boom and we see jamie kennedy in a blockbuster essentially which is a nice nod to our podcast yeah okay some other notes i wrote are um i think it's funny that the info section of this film is describes a, a group of offbeat friends I'm like, okay, they're all gorgeous and would definitely be the popular kids. Yeah, uh, what do you mean off? Like, Tatum and her hard nips, she's not offbeat. She's, like, grade A popular hot girl. Yeah, in what way are they off fucking beat at all? Like, what do their parents do, by the way? Are they just, like, drug dealers entirely? like, rich-ass hoes? Like, I don't understand. Yeah, their fucking houses are insane, like, in the middle of fucking nowhere, like, 40 acres of land type shit. Yeah, I'm like, offbeat? Nah. No. Oh, uh, when Courtney Cox says, I'm not just anyone. It's like, ooh. Yeah, she's a bad Tell bitch him. in this movie. Tell him. She's a bitch, but I also, at least she's trying to save an innocent man. That's, you know what? I always saw her as, like, a villain, which I understand, like, 
I understand why everyone thinks of her as a villain. Like when I was a kid, I was like, she's a bitch. Cause she's like mean to a teenage girl whose mom just died. That is pretty bitchy. But yeah, the reasoning for it is good. Yeah. She's like, um, I'm sorry. They're going to kill this man and he didn't do it. Maybe you should care. Yeah. Maybe like give a shit. Dude. And, and you like, falsely oh. accused him. Oh. So. Or, oh God, Billy is so gross. I think that's when he's like, uh, you need to move on. Like, oh yeah. What? No, like, well, I, I fully believe he's an extreme narcissist for sure. Mm-hmm. He's like, I know your mom died and you have PTSD and you're still grieving but like what about fucking me like we were like on our way to fucking and then you just like stop yeah but like more importantly um you need to like face down ass up for me like right away it's and like knowing you know. the ending knowing that he not only killed her mom but is like gonna kill her is just oh uh, it's yeah. infuriating yeah it's fucked <clears throat> knowing he's gonna murder in his mind he knows he's gonna murder her yet he's like manipulating her yeah. to fuck him yes it's so fucking gross Ugh, it's horrible and like do you think um Stu also wanted to fuck her like do you think they were both planning on maybe uh, doing that yeah probably i kind of think Ugh. that they were which is because they kind of implied that they both attacked the mom yeah and also because Stu at the very end was like i always had a thing for you sid oh, it's yeah, like and you're like Ooh. ew mm-hmm. yeah, he's super creepy basically they're both just like horny fucking bastards because mm-hmm. again like to cover the Stu thing Stu was like oh yeah me and casey becker dated but then like i left her for my girl it's like are you all just doing this because you're horny fucking losers and you like want to get laid slash can't get laid and now you're murdering people like what the fuck is wrong with you yeah i think the the, yeah there's definitely strong currents of both horny energy and murderous energy yeah horny murder horny murder no we don't like that yeah and then uh (laughs) i wrote my i'm fairly certain a garage door would never work this way (laughs) again captures the true horror of being manipulated by teenage boys oh i thought it's funny that dewey the cop is openly contributing to all the underage drinking oh i know he just walks in these kids are having fun don't get too crazy he's like i'm not gonna (sighs) you're supposed to be watching this bitch and you're letting her go to this raucous house party while there's a teenager murder on the loose dude that's what i've been you can't go to the party that's what i've been thinking or that's what i was thinking the whole time i was watching it too i'm like how are you so chill about this when like you said this is your one job and you're letting them go to a giant party in the middle. But you know it's what? It's already illegal. They're underage. It's his old, It's his whole ego because he's like, no, I'm there. Like, nothing bad will happen. It's like, oh, yeah, like 17 people get murdered. So It's also like teenagers are just getting drunk and right in front of you. Like, yeah. It's just like, yo, bro, this is not okay. When someone is literally on a spree killing teen, I mean, they killed Henry Winkler too. But like killing multiple teenagers and attempting to and you're like yeah they should all be getting drunk like no they need their fucking wits about them yeah they need to not and look what happened to sydney exactly it's so it's so it's infuriating so and it's like so fucked but you know what suck. if they didn't go to this party they wouldn't have figured it out true. and more people would have died probably yeah, that's true it's just like dude you're so bad at your job it's so bad like a cab baby mm-hmm. yeah, that's I, right. I, dewey's cute but a cab all the way I also do love um, Jamie Kennedy watching the movie and saying, Jamie, turn around, turn around, while the killer's behind him. Like, this is so deliciously meta. Dude, the whole movie is the most meta shit I have ever fucking seen in my life. I don't know if I've ever seen anything so meta before. It's so good. Ah, it is so good. Okay. So, I'm fairly certain you're going to nail these trivia questions, but I did try to make them, like, a little bit, like, intermediate. Uh Uh-oh. But you're going to nail them, I know it. Okay, question number one. What question does poor, poor Drew get wrong in the opening scene? Mm, they ask who the murderer was in Friday the 13th. Correct and she says Jason, mundo. but it's actually his mom. Correct, Mundo. Two, what is Sydney doing on the front porch when she asks the killer on the phone, what am I doing? Picking her nose. Yes. Where does Randy work? Uh, Quote, unquote, blockbuster. That's right. Okay, name one of the rules Randy gives for surviving a horror movie. You can't say, I'll be right back, because you won't be right back. Ah, God, you're nailing it. Okay, what does Sydney stab Billy with at the end? 
What does she stab him with at the end? It wasn't a hanger, was it? It was not a hanger, but it was not a knife. It's from the... She's in the closet, right? Mm -hmm. And then she comes out and she stabs him. Bless you. I know this. What the fuck is it? It's right in the old chesticles. It's not a pen. No. I don't know what it, what is it. Umbrella. Yes. Oh, a very, very come on. Umbrella, which I was like, um, ow. I'm like, <laughs> that would hurt so bad. Yeah. Holy. Holy like, smoke. That bitch had force behind her. Yeah. Well, yeah. She's like, you murdered everyone I love. So yeah, fuck so you. Stab you with an umbrella. Like, oh. Yeah. That's. And especially because that's after she finds out that he murdered her mom. Yeah. So filled yeah. with fucking rage. Yeah. yeah but I'm Absolutely. Just like, Ooh. I know. Yeah. It's fucked. So yeah, you did great. Oh, thanks. We I did get that last one wrong. Which screen character are you, Quiz? Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm so interested. I hope that they only do the old school characters and not like the new ones, because I'm not interested in that, to be like, honest. Sorry, movie one. Um, okay, I think this one... Oh, no, this is new screen. We don't want new screen. Okay, this one is let's see which member of this iconic Scream trio you are. Okay, pick a movie. You've got mail, Nightcrawler, or Rush Hour? Rush Hour. (laughs) Hell yeah. I know which one you're picking. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Pick a true crime podcast. My favorite murder, crime junkie, or I'm not really into true crime. I am, but I don't listen to many podcasts besides our own i don't listen to podcasts i just make them i just make them okay uh so i don't know what to say there because i do like true crime but i don't listen to either of those Hmm. blindly pick one then what was the first one my favorite murder or crime junkie i'll do that one because people have recommended it to me the first one pick a final girl nancy thompson from a nightmare on elm street taylor gentry from behind the mask the rise of leslie vernon or laurie strode from halloween Lori Strode. <clears throat> She's so cool. She is so cool. Do you have siblings? Yes, but we're not close. No, I'm an only child. Or yes, we fight constantly, but love each other. I guess I'll pick the last one, but we really don't fight. Mm-hmm. Pick a career. Actor, writer, detective. Actor. Oh. Pick a place to live. Seattle, New York City, or the small town I grew up in. Oh. Uh. Um, the small town I grew up in. Aww. Pick a Marvel character. Carol Danvers, Eddie Brock, Steve Rogers. Literally no one, none of these. <laughs> I'm like, wah, wah, wah. I, I'll choose the feminine sounding one, I Carol. suppose. Okay. That sounds a little ass, actually, but it's too late. Yeah. There's no young Carol. Carol. I'm like, gross. <laughs> what would you do if you became Ghostface's target? Leave town, take extensive notes so I can write about it later, or interview suspects? What was the first one? Leave town. I'd fuck him probably, but... uh, oh. no. <laughs> I guess it's close to interview suspects. Okay, that is like a while. That's a fantasy of mine for real. Did I tell you about this before? No. I think I have. Fucking someone in a ghost face mask. Oh, I knew about the mask. I didn't realize it was specifically ghost face. It's not specifically, but late, like I saw, I think I told you I saw that like picture of like the dude with this, the mask, like it's from the angle of the woman and her legs are both up and he's like between her legs. It's not explicit, but it's very like suggestive. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I, I like so ever it. since then I've been hyper fixated on that. Oh. Um, but I probably would just like leave fucking town and take everyone I love with me because like, like we're going on vacation. Yeah, bye. Okay, Ghostface is after your friend. What do you do? Draw attention Mark. away from your friend and to yourself, then attack with everything you've got. Wait in the wings for an opportune moment to step in. Put yourself between them, even if it means getting hurt. I would do one and three, but like I guess like the most me thing would be to like sac. <laughs> I'm sacrificing myself. I would definitely do that. Okay. Uh, pick a clue weapon to defend yourself against Ghostface. Amazing. Dagger, revolver, lead pipe. Lead pipe. That sounds lit. <laughs> You've defeated Ghostface. Pick somewhere to celebrate. A cabin in the mountains, Paris, or the local ice cream shop. 
I would do ice cream shop because the other ones sound like a little ominous for oh. some, like part two. Mm-hmm. I'll go to the ice cream shop, baby. Rocky Road. Rocky Dewey. Road. I can't wait to tell you who you got. Who? You are Dewey Riley. Yeah. You're loyal to a fault and always try to do the right thing, even when it's hard. You'll do whatever you need to protect those in need, except for all the mistakes he made that we just said. Fucking lol. Okay. Exciting. My phone's about to die, so you might want to plug it in if you don't mind. Okay. Here we go. Pick a movie. But you've I'm got gonna, mail. You've got mail, of course. Oh, did I tell you I recently watched that? Aww. Like two weeks ago, I loved it's it. It's so cute. It is, it is so like a warm blanket and it a hot is so cup of fucking tea. cute. I thought about you the whole time. Okay, pick a true crime podcast. My, My favorite, favorite murder. murder. I do listen. You, that's you told me to listen. Yeah, to that. sometimes they're like really problematic and annoying, but they try. I think. Yeah, and everyone likes them. I mean, clearly. Yeah, they just like pretend that they're progressive sometimes, and I'm like, you guys really aren't. You're like, no. Like at all. Like they advocate for therapy, which is good, but it's like. That doesn't automatically make you progressive. Yeah. Not exactly. anymore. No. Pick a final girl. Nancy Thompson from A Nightmare on Elm Street. Taylor Gentry from Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Or Lori Strode from Halloween. I also gotta do Lori. Yeah, she's a bad bitch. Do you have siblings? Yes, but we're not close. No, I'm an only child. Or yes, we fight constantly, but love each other. Yeah, these aren't like great choices, but I'll go with the first one. Just change it up. Yeah, I'm like, uh, what about just like, yes, yeah, right. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Pick a career, actor, writer, detective. Ooh, writer. Yes, she is. Okay. Pick a place to live, Seattle, New York City, or the small town I grew up in. Mm, Seattle. Love that place too. Pick a Marvel character. Oh God. Carol Danvers. <laughs> Eddie Brock. Steve Rogers. I'll do Eddie. You know what? I'm glad I didn't pick Steve Rogers because isn't that Captain America? Uh, probably. No. What would you do if you became Ghostface's target? Leave town? Take, esten- take extensive notes so I can write about it later? Or interview suspects? Um, Interview suspects. I'm asking bitches what is going She's on. Like, oh yeah? Where, Where were you see? on January 4th, 1997? bitch okay ghost faces after your friend what do you do draw attention away from your friend and to yourself and then attack with everything you've got wait in the wings for an opportune moment to step in or put yourself between them even if it means getting hurt i'll wait in the wings yes with a plan and a weapon you would do that and that would be a very smart thing to do right when they think they're gonna win busting like courtney cox (laughs) Yep, that's a way cooler response. Mine is like, um, I'm a caveman. <laughs> I'm putting myself in between immediately, <laughs> which is the dumbest thing ever to do. Okay, pick a clue weapon to defend yourself against Ghostface. I was hoping they were going to do the candlestick or whatever. Oh, yeah. Dagger, revolver, or lead pipe? Revolver. Revolver. And you've defeated Ghostface. Pick somewhere to celebrate. A cabin in the mountains. Paris or the local ice cream shop. He. I'm definitely not going to a cabin in the woods. That sounds terrifying. Yeah, the fuck are you so talking? I'm gonna go to Paris because I don't think Ghostface uh, has a passport. <laughs> You're gonna love this, baby. Oh! And of course, it makes so much sense for us. <laughs> You're Gail Weathers. Yes, Gail. You're clever and ambitious. Know how to get what you want, and always look out for number one. I'm you usually do the right one. thing, even if you have to do a few wrong things along the way. And when did you really do that was wrong? be mean to a teenager and that's basically it (laughs) that was pretty fucked up but that's it i mean and then she just flirts with like a hot cop that she is gonna bang anyway so like what me no harm no foul (laughs) (laughs) i'm like this perfectly makes so much sense Mm, for us in our lives uh uh, well that was great another successful installment in our second to last episode for halloween is it our second to last or is it our last we have a surprise for our (gasps) listeners oh I got I got confused because we, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Good you're right. Coming for you, but it is our second to last episode for this season. We appreciate you guys so much, and again, special shout out to Brandon who yeah. is an actual gem, and we definitely want to get him back 
on a more consistent basis because mm-hmm. he's just a delight and very smart and like super easy and fun to talk to and just like fun with like or fun what filled with fun facts there we go nailed it yeah he's like a movie buff connoisseur which we obviously love yeah all right guys well we love you very much and happy halloween happy halloween (laughs) bye Bye. (laughs) thank you to our producer brent for his editing skills and to grady for our delightful theme song if you have questions for us or would like to advertise with us, please email us at blockbusterwives at gmail.com. And as always, please rate, subscribe, and tell all your friends about us. We love you!